Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the new VPN teleport from Ubiquity. This is a zero config VPN, which requires no username or password. There are a few things that you need to have to make this work and we will go through that. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do that is to use my Ubiquity affiliate link that is in the description below. So first let's go over the requirements to be able to use Teleport. So we need a Dream Machine or a Dream Machine Pro running at 1.12 or later, a Dream Router or a UDM SE running at 2.4.0 or later, Unify Network version of 7.1.0 or later, and we need to have the Wi-Fi Man mobile app on either our iOS or our Android device. And one big thing here, you need to have remote access enabled. If you don't, this Teleport VPN will never work. Teleport VPN is based off a of WireGuard, so that should give us faster speeds. Let's go ahead and get it configured. So there really isn't too much we need to configure as this is the zero config VPN. What we need to do, we need to go into our Unify Network Controller and then click Teleport and VPN. We'd see teleport at the top and we need to enable it and then press apply changes. This may be enabled already by default, but I did have it turned off. Now we have this invitation and we need to generate a new link. So that's what I'm going to do. If we look under the information for the invitation, it says generate a unique link for a user to click and get access to your teleport network. This link will open the Wi-Fi Man app on your device. And it also says that the link expires in 24 hours. So what we need to do, we need to copy this and then send it to the user who we want to access our teleport network. I would suggest sending this through Signal, which is encrypted. Okay, now you can see my phone and in Signal, I just sent a note to myself and I'm gonna open up this teleport link. We could see that it says connect to Mac Telecom SE and I'm gonna press connect. Now we're on a data collection and use form. I'm gonna agree and continue. And now it's asking us to install the VPN configuration. So for Unify Teleport to work, we need to install the Unify Teleport VPN configuration on your phone. I'm gonna install the VPN configuration. We're gonna allow it. And now it's showing that we're connecting. So Wi-Fi Man is currently connecting to the Mac Telecom SE. This can take a few moments. So we can see at the bottom that it's activating the tunnel. And at the top, we could see the VPN is connected and it's connected to my Mac Telecom SE public IP address, which is blurred out for obvious reasons. Now we could see on the bottom right hand corner that we have this teleport section in the Wi-Fi Man app and we could turn on and off the VPN. So I'm going to turn it off and now we could see we're disconnected from the VPN. We'll turn it back on and we could see we're connected to the VPN once again. If we click on these three little dots in the top right corner, we could remove the teleport tunnel from this device. Now let's take a look at a couple other things. So we could generate as many links as we would like and we could see the invitation history. We could see the time that it was created at and the time that's elapsed and we could revoke these if we'd like. They will expire after 24 hours if they haven't been claimed. Once the link is claimed, it will go out of the invitation history. Now to see who's connected to our teleport VPN, we could go over to the client devices. We could either search the client devices or we could go to display options and just uncheck everything besides the teleport VPN. We can now see that Cody's iPhone is connected through teleport at address 192.168.2.1. If we take a look back at getting to know teleport, it says, can I change the subnet of my connected clients? And we can't currently do it, but they are looking at adding this feature in the future. If we had a teleport Teleport client on here and we wanted to revoke their access, all we would need to do is click on the client and then we could press revoke access or we could disconnect them. How we have the Teleport VPN configured right now, this user could reach any single subnet that we have created within our UDM SE or our UDRs. So if I ping 192.168.10.220, which is my Synology NAS, we're going to be able to get there. And in a lot of cases, we're not gonna want these users to be able to have access everywhere. We can see that my teleport IP is 192.168.2.1. So I'm gonna create a firewall rule to block out private IP, so RFC 1918. And then I will create one to allow my end user or my teleport client to be able to get to my NAS. So let's go ahead and do that right now. The first thing I'm going to do before putting in a firewall rule, I'm going to go over to profiles and then we're going to go to port and IP groups. I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call this teleport. 
IPs. The type is going to be an IPv4 address or subnet, and my teleport subnet is 192.168.2.0/24, and I'm going to add that. Your subnet may change. I'm not too sure how they decide what network to give you. And then I'm going to press apply changes. I already have an IP group of RFC 1918 for other firewall rules that I'd done. But if you don't, this is what it looks like. So our first address is 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Our second is 172.16.0.0 slash 12. And our last one is 10.0.0.0.8. Now we need to go up to our firewall and security. Under firewall rules, we're going to press create new rule. And the type is going to be LAN out. And the description I'm going to use is block teleport to private subnets. Our action is going to be to drop and then our IPv4 protocol will be all. Our source type is going to be a port or an IP group and the source will be that group of the teleport that we created. So teleport IPs. The destination is going to be a port IP group of our RFC 1918 group and then we'll press apply changes. Now bringing my ping tool back on my iPhone, we shouldn't be able to hit this IP. And we can see that the requests are being timed out. So now let's create an accept rule to allow our teleport clients to get to our Synology NAS on 10.220 while blocking everything else out. So to allow our teleport clients to our Synology NAS, we could create a new rule. This rule is gonna be done under the same type, which we LAN out. And then we'll say allow teleport to NAS. The action will be accept, the protocols will be all, and the source will be that port or IP group of our teleport IPs that we created. The destination, since this is just a single IP for a NAS, will be an IP address, and then I'm going to manually put it in of 192.168.10.220 and press apply changes. Now this still won't work how it is because the firewall rules are done top down order, and we're below the block teleport to private subnet. So we need to grab this rule 201 and bring it above rule 2000. So now we can see allow teleport to NAS is above the block rule and we should be able to ping it. So now I'm gonna to try to ping our Synology NAS and we could see that the requests are going through. But if I try to ping a Ubiquiti device from that same network, it's gonna fail. So we can pick my RPS at 192.168.10.191 and we could see the requests aren't going through. So that's going to be it for this teleport VPN video. We did some basic firewall rules to block inner VLAN routing, and we did allow our users to be able to communicate with our Synology NAS. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.